truth be told, I, I really did not know that that was ever used as a derogatory term for. People like Nick Merckx, it's like a one in a million shot, right? Like that level of success and fame and notoriety. And then what do you do with that platform? You use it to put on people who have the highest suicide rate of any group, including veterans. That's the thing that you want to harp on? Okay. Hey pals, if you're watching this and you enjoy it, click like and comment. It really helps out with the algorithm. Thank you. YouTube, what's going on today, man? Listen, today's YouTube upload is pretty cool, man. It's me on the bus with the boys, Will Compton, Taylor Luan. Big shout out to those guys, man. They're legendary. And what we're talking about is my Twitch band. They were super curious. I opened up shared my thoughts we went a little bit more in depth and talked about the band i'm on band now and i think my relationship with twitch is okay wow. but a lot has changed and you're gonna find out why look if you like today's youtube video don't forget to drop a thomas i was gonna take like on the video and definitely give me a comment on the whole situation down below peace and love baby whoa never made a youtube upload about my twitch band figured now's a good time i was gonna ask mm. explain this twitch universe are you are you currently banned on it no i i did water. get banned though for saying a derogatory term i the term you want me to say the term tranny. it was tranny, you know and, and truth and truth be told i i really did not know that that was ever used as a derogatory term for you know what though like i'm honestly inclined to believe him because i don't think nick is a deep guy but that's wild to not know that that word was derogatory, that's uh, pretty wild. Now, listen, did I say that word on Respawn a few times? Maybe? I know Sark did. I know Sark did. But hey, listen, that was 15 years ago. What are you going to do? I really didn't. I know, uh, but it's just, you're so, you're so well-spoken, and then you were obviously in a hairy, like, watery situation. Yeah. And you're like, I just don't, you just want to say the right thing here yeah you do you know i think i've stopped caring as much about what people think uh -huh. about uh -huh. my opinions you know uh -huh. I, I believe the things i believe and and I, if people ask me i'm going to share those things i'm uh -huh. confident in them you know i'm always eager to learn more and to explore uh -huh. the other side of the coin really i have not seen any indication that he would be willing to have a conversation with someone that would be equipped and willing to offer an alternative interpretation of the current trans discourse I, I haven't seen any indication that he is open-minded about it at all what is he talking about i'm a, i'm always down to have a conversation with people on the other side of the coin really i think it would be interesting content for nick to have a conversation with like a licensed therapist or like a licensed uh mental health professional someone who who maybe in their line of work deals with um gender dysphoria transitioning um these kinds of things i think that would be good content would he ever do that no i i, I don't I, I don't know what he's talking about when he says he's down to have a conversation with people that you know give him a different take he seems really stubbornly set in his views about like trans people he can be kind of vague but i feel like you can reasonably infer a lot from the things that he says the things that he tweets etc cetera, etc cetera. My take is that he is, uh, he calls himself a Christian. I believe he could be accurately described as a, a religious conservative. He follows and amplifies um, Matt Walsh and libs of TikTok. So I think it's pretty safe to say that he views, I mean, I no, you can 100% say that he views transness as inherently a mental disorder. He seems to think that if you affirm someone's identity, you're affirming a delusion and therefore you're harming them. That seems to be his trans take. That's basically the default sort of religious conservative take on transness. But at the same time, I strongly uh, disagree with all of that stuff. You know, I think it's inherently unhealthy and it's a scary precedent to set going forward for young children to say, hey, listen, if they're feeling a type of way, they can do this, this, this and mm -hmm. that. I believe, you know, through the way I was raised and now being a father myself, that there's other ways to combat that and that. Can we get into fucking specifics here? What is with the generalities, the vagueness? What are you talking about? First of all, what do you think is happening? I mean, we know that Donald Trump, for example, he's been repeating this crazy, insane lie. It's the worst thing. You know, you send your daughter or you send your son, Jimmy. I think he said Jimmy. You send, you, you send little Jimmy to school and then he comes back and he's a girl. And it's like, well, what happened? And then they don't have to tell the parents. This, he's, you know, Trump is out there telling, telling his supporters that they're giving out like sex changes. 
the kids in school literally and so i don't know if he believes that i probably i assume probably he believes that um if at the least the first thing that we should do is try to find a healthier alternative than the things that we're doing so i don't know exactly what he means but it seems like he's saying that you should never under any circumstances affirm a trans identity for anybody under the age of 18. i would like to see what he's basing this off of because every bit of data that i've seen and there's you know there's there's conflicting conversations that are happening there's they slowed down some of the puberty blocker stuff in sweden for example i believe they still prescribe it in quote unquote extreme circumstances for in cases of extreme dysphoria, I believe they still prescribe puberty blockers and, and hormones at a certain age. It's I think usually it's the earliest that you're going to start for hormone replacement therapy is 15 or 16 years old. Um, puberty blockers are reversible and they've been used for, I believe, decades. It's just... He's not, he's not offering any kind of, um, like, well, there's got to be a better way to do it, man. You know, there's got to be a healthier way. I evaluate something like health in terms of, uh, like, suicidality. If we can reduce someone having suicidal urges, ideation, or actually making attempts on their own lives, if we can reduce that and if we can reduce suffering, that's all tied into health for me. If somebody is relieved of an urge to harm themselves or even worse, then that's health. That's a, that's a healthy push in the right direction. I don't know what he bases any of this off of. He's never gone into any details, you know, about why he thinks these things. He's very likely not prepared to like defend that position based on anything outside of his own like feelings. Like it just feels wrong. It just feels wrong to him. And therefore, you know, we should take steps to make sure these things don't have like young kids don't get the young queer kids get the support that they need, especially ones that are in vulnerable situations that suffer abuse from their own family. We know from the statistics that young queer kids suffer abuse at higher levels. Uh, they're more likely to be abused by their own family uh, for being queer, for being trans. They're more likely to be abused by violently assaulted by their own peers at school. This is a really vulnerable population and they need help. They need support. You know, I spoke about that and there's a lot of trans people out there and LGB people that probably think that I hate them, but I don't. The real truth is, is that I, I, I feel bad, you know, that they feel. I don't hate them. I feel bad because they're sick people that live perverted lifestyle and their abominations. I just don't think that it's smart to peddle and push the things that they're doing. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, I think that that's bear in mind that, you know, when people like Nick say pedal and push, what he means is people existing in a in a public way. You know, when I was growing up in the 90s, it was a totally normal thing for people to. I mean, homophobia back then was way more common. You guys, I'm saying way more common in the 90s. I mean, that wasn't even that long ago. We're talking 20, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. And it was not uncommon at all for people to say, I don't care how people live their life. I just don't want to see it. You can do whatever you want to do in the, in the comfort of your own home. That's fine. But I don't want to see two guys walking down the street holding hands or kissing. And I don't want to have anybody do You better not hit on me. That was like the default position. I feel like even, even most conservatives at this point have moved away from that when it comes to gay people. But now it's become like now they're just putting it on trans people. Twitch is woke now, beyond woke, the gaming industry entirely. Um... All of these companies and corporations. Pronouns! Gender ambiguity! If you aren't in the front doing the high knees, man, you know? At the front of the parade, ranting and raving, man, happy to be there. You're an enemy, you know? It's just kind of the way it is. I'm not surprised that Twitch banned me for this, you know? I will say, though... You used a slur. I've been streaming on Twitch since before Twitch was Twitch. Back when it was Justin TV. The majority of you guys probably don't even know what that is. I mean, I'm a fossil in this world. And I don't have a track record of being banned. Like, I'm not a guy that gets suspended and banned. In fact, it's never happened. So for this to happen the way that it did, we're like, oh, Nick, here's a week. Like, man, a conversation, a phone call was kind of expected from my end but at the same time you know i guess i did break a rule and when you break rules you got to face the consequences in a world that does that so i spoke out about that i did use the well word. you know i don't know maybe like i i want to be i want to try to be um charitable 
Like if it, if it is the case that he legitimately didn't know that that was a slur, then I think maybe he kind of has a point. Maybe it's a little wild to me that he wouldn't know that it was a slur, but I kind of believe it at the same time. Like I kind of believe him that he didn't know it was a slur. And if he didn't know, then I think, I think maybe he has like a little bit of a point. Maybe it's like a 24 hour ban or like a conversation and he could just like simply say like, well, I didn't know I won't use that word anymore. And that, that would be that. I think probably it had to do with the fact that he's just been, he's just been more and more visibly coming out against trans people. And so I think it was like the, 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 the use of the derogatory term in conjunction with this like new push from him to just, you know, very openly. It's not just about like trans kids. Like that, that, that's a red herring to me. It, it, he, he, I have seen enough takes from him at this point to know that his problem is not just with kids receiving gender affirming care. I mean, he has like completely false notions of what's actually happening. He thinks, and, and millions of people think that there are kids like kids and 10 year olds and 11 year olds that are getting sex changes. And that's not happening. It doesn't even make any sense when you think about it, like a prepubescent kid get, getting a sex change. Like how does that even work? But it's not just about the kids. He talks about trans people as though they are inherently ment mentally ill. All of that coupled with him using this slur was, it was probably the, I assume it was the straw that broke the camel's back and they were like, all right, just give him a week. I did not mean to be derogatory, but make no mistake about it. I was talking. <laughs> so, like, I, mean, I don't want to sit up here and act like I wasn't talking. I was talking. But about I didn't mean to be derogatory, but I was talking sh Like, this is why I say this guy is kind of simple. He's kind of a simple guy. You know what I mean? How can it not be derogatory if you were talking sh I'm giving it as good as I get it. Because uh, you know, when you open up that door, yeah, you know, you know a lot of these people, they, they he's just a dumb, he's just like a dumb guy. Like, he's not, he's just a simple, primitive guy. You know, they live online, man. And, and internet and go internet, man. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> you know, what I was gonna ask. Like, yeah. trolls be, you know, be trolling. Well, uh, did you? So, did you become more passionate about this stance once you had a kid? Yeah, I became more passionate about the stance, and I also became. Yo, this sip of water was unreal. Passionate about this stance once you had a kid. Yeah, I became more wow. passionate about the stance, and I also became more comfortable speaking about it because, I like I said my, earlier, man, I think belly. having a kid and being a parent, a lot of times you hear parents say that, like, you know, having a kid changes everything. I don't know if I believe that. You know, I haven't been a parent for too long, right? But I do believe that having a kid changes the way you think about everything. Mm -hmm. So, look, I, I kind of always thought this way. I just, I wasn't as passionate, right? Right, because it's not necessarily affecting or has a potential right. to affect on trans people is my passion. <laughs> It's my passion in life is just to talk about trans people. You got to follow your passions in this life, you know? Fact so who you. cares, right? Just keep it right. going. But I mean, you know, you're seeing a lot more of it mm -hmm. and you're seeing it become an issue in schools, especially here in this country. And I, I just, you know, it, if I love when people do the thing where they pretend it isn't happening and then like the people that have the receipts, they throw all the pics and vids and examples of these things happening. Yeah. What thing? What things do you think are happening? I mean, you guys are the same people that believed that teachers were putting litter boxes in classrooms. It wouldn't shock me if Nick believes what Trump has been saying recently, that kids are going to school and they're coming back the other gender. Like they're coming back from school with bandages because they've just had like bottom surgery at the age of 11. Um, it, it, I, 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 he probably believes that, I would say. CNN, so in the United States, at least 121,882 children ages 6 the 17 were diagnosed with gender dysphoria from 2017 to 2021, with the rate increasing 70% from 2020 to 2021, according to data collected by Reuters and health technology company Komodo Health. Just 17,600 children from that total population started taking puberty blockers or gender affirming hormones within that five year period. Of those children, 27% were on puberty blockers. So I don't know what videos he's seen that demonstrates that kids are going to school and getting sex changes these therapies these medicines are prescribed because there is measurable positive impact again it reduces depression it reduces anxiety it reduces urges to self-harm and so many different data sets all over different countries have demonstrated this now there's again there's a couple countries in europe really just i think it's just a couple countries i think it's sweden and england and I think that's it, maybe, maybe a couple more that are pausing um, puberty blockers, not 100% pausing them, but pausing them um, outside of, of extreme cases because they want to study it more. But so far, I don't think there's any compel compelling data yet to demonstrate that puberty blockers is having like, th th that poses like a serious risk, long-term risk. Instances of depression, anxiety, 
self-harm drastically reduce, especially if you get support from your community and family. If your family and your community, your classmates, your teachers, if they all support you, then there are massive reductions in these kinds of things. It's also important to establish what gender dysphoria is. Gender dysphoria is not transness. That's not what it means. Gender dysphoria is the state of distress that someone feels as a result of an incongruence between their sex assigned at birth and their trans identity. That's what it means. It's the suffering. So you can be trans and not have gender dysphoria. But the most common treatment for gender dysphoria is transitioning. You can alleviate that distress. You can alleviate that depression, that anxiety, that mental distress, emotional distress through transitioning. And we're not, when we say transitioning, everybody just immediately jumps to sex change operations. And there's like 57 steps that come before something. First of all, not everybody gets a surgery. And second of all, there's like so many different steps to take before you get there. Um, but they don't give like prepubescent kids, like the, the idea that they're giving prepubescent kids surgeries is just a made up thing it's not happening this is not something that's happening that whole crowd the pretend this doesn't happen crowd they're the worst man they're literally the worst if and when hopefully someday we look this is what happens when you inform yourself through like you know libs of tiktok i genuinely think that nick should make a an appointment with a, a therapist or put the word out like Hey, do any therapists or people that specialize in transitioning or, or, or trans issues or, 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 or de child development, child developmental psychology, or, you know, some, someone who's an expert in the field, like invite them to come on the stream and then voice your concerns and then see what they tell you. Like that would be a video that I would love to watch back on this time. And it's a lot different. I would have been super disappointed in myself that I never said anything mm -hmm. right straight up. That's yeah. what I thought about. I, thought, I spoke to my dad about, I'm, you know, dad, am I making the wrong decision? And like, yo, you know, business wise, yeah, I'm burning all kinds of cash, but I'm set. I'm set. I'm good. So that's also a different. He's, you know, basically calling himself brave here. You got to be brave. You got to be brave and shit on trans people, even though 40% of the population constantly shits on trans people in the open. You got to reach a point in life where you stand on principles. It is not like abnormal for people to shit on trans people openly. Like that, that, that's. There are tens of millions of people that do it every day, okay? Come down off the cross. We need the wood, all right? It's a little caveat. <laughs> yeah, I got all these, like, Doc fans, you know, that are so mad about the way it And again, it's like, when you're fabulously wealthy and you don't need the money, it's like, maybe somebody would get in trouble if, like, they worked at, like, I don't know, ad agency, and then they tweeted talking shit about trans people or whatever. When you're independently wealthy and you get rewarded for talking about this stuff, like when he when he talks, every time he's engaged in controversy about trans stuff, like look at his numbers on Social Blade or whatever. He, like the numbers go up. He gets more donations. He gets more subscribers. He's like, it's a, it's a, it's a reinforced kind of cultural thing. It all boiled over between him and I and just the boys and I and stuff. And I got so many of these guys that are like, oh dude, anything for some bread, huh Nick? Anything for some cash like dude you're talking to the wrong guy holy i'm the guy that says what i want and burns the money not that guy it's comical man truly conversation too you know you might ask yourself you know hey nick should you have said something way sooner you know did you hold out because the bread i mean the truth is is that i had a kid that's the truth and, uh -huh. and and that was a big turning point for me i would be willing to bet thousands of dollars that it has less to do with the kid and more to do with the fact that libs of TikTok type vilification of trans people just became way more mainstream from like, I don't know when it started. We'll say 2018, 2019. It just became way more mainstream. There's just openly shit on trans people. It happens constantly now, especially like on Elon's Twitter. Are you kidding me? Like you can't say the word cisgender on Twitter. I don't know if he's still blocking it, but they, but they, you could say the word, uh, like you can say like the N word. I've seen N words in my mentions that don't get like the label or whatever. But if you say cisgender, Elon, who, you know, lost his son, he has a trans daughter. He says he lost his son. He's gone. He's, he's on a personal anti-trans campaign. This stuff, I don't know why he's like, Nick is framing it. Like, you know, some people just gotta, you just gotta be brave and say what's on your mind. It's like, dude, I'm like 50 million people that spew this shit every day openly people like nick Merckx, it's like a one in a million shot right it's like a one in a, one in one in 
50 million, one in 100 million, like that level of success and fame and notoriety. And then what do you do with that platform? You use it to on people who have the highest suicide rate of any group, including veterans. You're given this blessing of having just this massive platform to talk about anything you want, to address any topic that you want, to push for change in any kind of way that you want. And you use that massive platform to punch down on people who are the most at risk, vulnerable population in the country. Of all the things, that's the thing that you wanna harp on, okay? You know, but it's definitely the combination of a lot of things, man, you know? Either way, I have a community that strongly believes in me. There's so many people out there that shout out and fam, shout out and well. fam. Love y'all. Love y'all. Just afraid to talk about it, speak about it, because you get in big trouble. Yeah, you really it's scary. Do, you got to. You got to have. And I don't know about like fear. I don't know if they're afraid to talk about it. I think most people are pretty confident in their words and their ability to say what they want to say. I think they just know that if they do talk about these things in this way, things are going to happen. So it's not necessarily fear. It's just they understand that there's consequences. Which yeah, is- you know, if you have like a professional career or whatever, and then you go on Twitter and your your boss and your coworkers follow you, and you go on Twitter and, and like Nick Merckx, you just, you say, you know what? Transness isn't real. It's a mental, it's a mental disability. Yeah, there's probably going to be consequences for that. Which is crazy for speaking your mind and speaking the truth, by the way. It's literally the truth. You know, when you say that transitioning is inherently unhealthy. Like when you say something like that. What are you basing that off of? Seriously, what are you basing that off of? You haven't even tried to explain what that means. How do you measure health? It's true for the mind and the body. Yet people will argue it and they'll say- It's not. Like, look, man, I, I had an issue with trans people, I would say about 15 years ago. I, re- I remember I was playing, I was playing uh, video games with uh, Fenton. We were playing Halo, like, uh, I don't know, when Halo 4 came out, I think. And we were just kind of cracking jokes. I was making edgy jokes or whatever. And uh, he, he said the word transphobic. And it was the first time I had heard the word transphobic. He's like, that's transphobic. He was just, he was playing around too. Fenton's in here. And I laughed when I heard the term. I laughed at it. That was just like 15 years ago, 12 years ago, whenever it came out. And so I had similar thoughts. I had similar, I remember having similar thoughts. Like I just assumed that trans identity meant you were just like mentally unwell. And the conversation around transness became way more mainstream in the last like 10 years, kind of started with like Caitlyn Jenner in 2014. And then I looked into it myself, challenged my own biases. I was like, oh, what is the, you know, what does the data show? What does it mean to transition? What, what is transit? What, what is the process of transitioning? What are the different processes of transitioning? What kind of an impact does it have on people's mental health? And what I saw in study after study after study after study after study after study study was that, holy shit, okay, it actually seems to help a lot of people. Like a lot of people express their lives improving immeasurably after they successfully transition. And so I was able to just let go of that. I mean, it was just purely based on ignorance. Like I didn't know anything about transness. I didn't know anything about medical treatment for these things. I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about it. I had strong opinions about something I knew nothing about. And once I realized that I was able to let like all that go. And I, I, I no longer l- look at these people like they're inherently crazy. Say there's this, 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 and that, and there isn't. And then when you say that you can get in trouble and people say you're being transphobic as if you're in fear, <laughs> dude. Around, man. I mean, of course, of course it's fear. What else could it be? You are afraid that transness is a social contagion. You're afraid that it's a mental disorder. You're afraid that if we accept it too much in the mainstream, then a bunch of people are going to be like, I guess, somehow convinced that they're trans. And then, you know, chop their dicks off and chop their boobies off. And of course it's fear. What else is it? I mean, how do you guys feel about that? If you don't no, mind? I loved everything you yeah, said yeah. right there. I, I, I'm I'm interested too. Like you ta- uh, referred to speaking to your old man. Like I, I'm sure it's kind of difficult to try and maneuver your words when you when you're like in a world where it's just chat online. How are people thinking about me? How are people feeling to where you get to a point of this is kind of an out there question, but do you think there could be something where let's say data shows majority of people like X, but X is actually a bad thing and we need to somewhat have our own principles besides solely using data i mean like how would you define like a bad thing because as far as i understand if you're gonna say like well you know like you can tell me that these people are happier you can tell me these people are more fulfilled you can tell me that these people are more productive in their lives you can tell me that these people have 
healthier relationships with themselves and with others, but it's still bad. And that, that feels like a feeling to me. You just have a feeling. It just feels bad. That is not going to be something that's convincing for me. I mean, shouldn't that matter? If you have data that show like anywhere between like 50 and 75% of people experience like really positive outcomes after transition. I mean, like if you want to talk about, if we want to have a conversation about like sex change operations, the, did you guys know that the regret rate for knee surgery is higher than sex reassignment surgery? Literally, look that up. It's not that nobody ever regrets transitioning. I mean, it, that happens and it's not, that's not something, I mean, that's a, I'm sure that's a really tough thing. But if, but if one person regrets transitioning and then 20 people over here say that it helped them a lot, am I gonna look at that one person and say, well, we should deny those 20 people Healthcare that would make their lives better because one person regrets it. No, I, I that's, I mean, and, and, and we're not even talking about one out of 20. And so the regret rate for, for fully transitioning is I think much lower than one out of 20. Freedom of like, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to speak on this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, you, you give less about what people think. Was that like a difficult balance when you finally like kind of found that footing? Yeah, man. A big hurdle, you know? Um, because you don't want to make people mad. Like, I, I don't want to wake up every day and piss people off. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, the guy that's tweeting me the paragraph, what he's upset. This guy, come on, bro. Of course you want to make people mad. Of course you do. You're, you're intentionally provocative. When you make these statements like transness isn't real, trans people aren't real. Of course you're trying to piss people off. You don't, you don't think you know what you're doing? He knows what he's doing. I gotta want him to be mad or disappointed. I mean, I'm sorry that he feels the way he does about me. Facts, I right, do facts. something about it. And like, if I he don't. could really just rip the truth out of my fucking chest and put it in front of him, he would see that I'm not this enemy. Unless he wants that being taught to kids in school, then you are my enemy. I don't know about enemy. I shouldn't have said that. Like, we're not enemies, but. What do you think they're teaching kids in school? What do you think they're teaching them? Uh, I think, it's pretty obvious at this point that the whole right wing space thinks that there's this like industrial complex. There's like a trans industrial complex and schools are just farms. They're just farming out trans kids at school and a kid sco shows up at school and day one, the teacher's like, I think you're trans. It doesn't take a lot to get these people to believe this stuff. They, they, they are primed to believe it because they have this idea of like wokeness and and left, leftists and liberals and, and it's just, you know, and we want to destroy the nuclear family. We want to destroy God. We want to destroy capitalism and replace it with the woke. You know, I'm optimistic about people. Like I think if he sat down and if he, if somebody could explain to him the benefits of transitioning, if somebody could give their own sort of testimonial and speak from their own experience and talk about like, I used to wake up and I used to, you know, not want to exist. I used to pray for God to take me from this earth. And then, you know, after this process, I, my, uh, my life is pretty normal. Like I have like a solid baseline. I'm a happy person, but, but I'm, uh, like I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic enough about human beings that I think there is, there is probably a way that somebody could explain this stuff to Nick in a way that we could, could, could like pierce through that ignorance. But uh, I think his cup is full. You know what I mean? If you could really get a look, like just a, just a very transparent look, because sometimes it's hard to put your real feelings and raw emotions into words, you know, like just perfectly so that the other person that's hearing this can understand. But if you, the listener, could just grab the feeling out from me and see it in your own way perfectly, anybody would be able to see clearly that this doesn't come from a point of hatred, okay? It comes from- uh, it's, It comes from fear and ignorance. That's a powerful combination. Fear and ignorance, oh my God. That's MAGA. That's the foundational underpinning of MAGA. Subscribe. Is fear and ignorance. When you have a group of people that are afraid of something and they're ignorant to the specifics of that thing, then all it takes is a demagogue to come in and play off of that fear and ignorance and then turn that into anger. That is the basis of the entire modern conservative movement in America. It's, it's fear and ignorance. From a point of health and care and love, it really, really does. I mean that. I care for the people in this world. I care for health and your being, you know, and it being good. These are important things. And I do not think that doing these types of things to your body, I don't believe that it's healthy. Logically, everything you said, I align with, especially having kids. You, you run into those issues with things being taught to kids in school. It's Again, like, it's just based on nothing. It's just your feelings. It feels wrong. It feels bad. It feels immoral. It feels destructive. It feels unhealthy. Therefore, it is unhealthy. People like to say that... Uh, Oh, you throw, you throw being a parent around, you throw being a parent, you know what I mean? Like anybody can have an opinion, even if they're not a parent. I, I agree with that. 
I just think that there's a perspective that's gained after having your own kid, which I'm sure you guys can agree with, right? Yeah. And it's just, you know, it, 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 you know how impressionable your kids are and you know how impressionable your kid is. You know, it, it's like, I, I know as well, like when I do stuff in front of my little boy, you know, he does it back and, and vice versa. Like we play all the time, we hang out all the time. So we know how impressionable these young minds are because we were young too man like it, it like dude it, 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 it's just, my kid thinks he says he's a dinosaur should i say he's a dinosaur it's not it, it doesn't say make sense to encourage these kinds of things when we know how kids are when you get banned is this somebody from twitch reaching out to you letting them know, letting you know that yeah i said banned? that i said that and they banned me for how long they banned me for it was a week i found out when i was on the way to see you guys in vegas no shit. yeah I, I, it was like three in the morning and we I woke up to being banned. I was like, okay, you know, I didn't really care, man. You Is know? there not like a like some strike? Because you're rich as. F I mean, listen, respect. You're rich as. F of course, you don't care. System or anything. It's just kind of. And you when he comes back, he'll get like ten times more subs subs on the day he comes back. Usually is man, and I don't have any strikes, but I will say. Uh, That's what I'm saying, man. Like they take that very seriously at Twitch. You know, like look, I mean, Twitch and just the gaming world in general is very pro all that so i'm kind of like a dinosaur i'm off on my own you know land. but you know my community i was gonna say your audience i think the majority of them align as well but there are but there are some that have not and they've spoken about that you know but it was is that is. now was that and i'm sorry for being ignorant about this was that when you were like we're gonna uh we're gonna boycott call of duty i never call for a boycott I never that said was that. the audience though, they, right? They, people but, were just but doing what people do. Right? Yeah. I never yeah, yeah, said yeah. like, "Hey, don't play COD." You know? It has to yeah. make you feel good though, knowing your audience is like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's crazy. It's like the internet though; like, it lives for two weeks, and then it dies. It's weird. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. Strange. Everybody was like, "Don't play Call of Duty ever again." I'm like, "Oh God, man, this is this entire thing is gonna go in it." It's strange. That's, that's another thing that people need to realize. Moments are like a fart in the wind yes. on, the, on the internet, bro. It's when things strange. are good, it's like, yeah. hey, this in a week. This News cycles now in the modern era, it's actually crazy. It's like 24 hours, you know. Like, nobody's going to be talking about the uh, second assassination guy tomorrow. A guy went on a fucking golf cart or a golf course with an AK-47 and got within 300 yards of the president, and no one's going to be talking about it tomorrow. This will be gone. When things right. are bad, you think the world's coming out? It's like, yeah. this is going to be over right, in 24 man, hours. Right, it's going to be right. something new there. But something new. Bitch about, bro. Yeah, right. Always something to bitch about, you know, or be happy about. It's like, It goes up and it goes down, right. man, you know? Right. But that There's, was a big moment in my career, man. I mean... I mean, I've never been in trouble like that. I've never been in heat like that, mm -hmm. I guess, per se. You know, I feel real good about it all, man. I'm very proud of myself that I said what I said. I know it's not an easy thing to say. And, uh. <laughs> no! 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 Are you kidding me? It's not easy to go on the internet and make fun of trans people in 2024. Explain my mentions anytime I mention trans people. Explain that. They find it. They're like combing the internet every day for every thread on Twitter that talks about trans people just so they can hop in there and be like, you fucking chop your dick off. Blah, blah, blah. It's not easy to get on the internet and speak ill of trans people in 2024. Jesus Christ. As time goes on. Nick's over here building the railroads, metaphorically. I'm getting, I'm getting more and more confident speaking on this. I've mm -hmm. done a lot of research, man. I really, I've spoken to a lot of people on both sides of it. No, you have not. Too, you have not. Nick, Nick, if by if by some chance you ever watch this, I want to know. I want names. Who have you spoken to that is qualified, that is trained in this field, and is qualified to give you answers about you know why gender transitioning happens, how it happens, the impact that it has? I want a name. Just give me one name of someone who's tried to explain this to you. And I think ultimately we all agree that we want that we want what's best for people, you know, and, and me, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty healthy gamer and that's where a lot of this comes from, man, is just overall health, you know, like, do you take care of yourself? Is this taking care? You know, I sign off on every fucking stream, every YouTube video I do, I say, take care of yourself, take care of each other, peace and love, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean that take care of yourself. And is that taking care of yourself? Cutting off pieces of your body? Take. I wonder if you feel similarly about like, um, breast reductions plastic surgery, circumcision. I want, I wonder if he's very consistent in this, you know, it can, yeah. wisdom teeth, wisdom teeth. Yeah. That's another one too. Fucking drugs that are horrible for you, your mm -hmm. mind and your body. It's inherently, no matter how you spin it, a very unhealthy thing to do, you know? And, and I, I, I just can't, I can't 
sign off on that. Right. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I looked it up one day. I looked up one day if like bigotry could be considered a mental illness. And it turns out that there was actually a robust debate about bigotry, racism, sexism, transphobia or whatever, homophobia. There, there actually was a robust debate about whether or not to classify these things as a mental disorder. But there were a couple things that got in the way of actually like making that jump and and calling it a mental disorder. Number one, it's so widespread that in effect, you would be saying that, you know, 40 to 60 percent of people are are mentally ill with bigotry. And because it's so prolific, it kind of didn't make sense to cl classify it as such. And then there were also legal considerations. So if you say there's someone who is racist, for example, if you want to call that a mental illness, well, what happens if somebody kills a black person and then claims mental illness. And so there were like legal considerations there too. But there was a time when when uh, mental health professionals kind of had like a debate about whether or not to, to call it a mental illness. I think this is ill. I think this is an illness. I think this is a uh, poisonous for someone's mind to, to have such ignorant and bigoted views of of people that never did him any harm. Like, I think that is sick. After the week ban, what's your relationship with Twitch like now? It's okay, you know, they, they understand there's gonna be different uh, flavors on Twitch, yeah. but at the same time, man. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's okay, I guess. It's not great. <laughs> if I had to guess, there's some people it's in the office who really don't mess with me. But it's, I, like, look, I, look, I, I don't have any weird in my heart about it, you know? Yeah, I appreciate you speaking on it I too. Mean, it like, seems no, like mind. you got a lot yeah. of weird yeah. in your you heart about job. it. No doubt. You Big shock to both it. those guys, man. Will and Taylor, uh, the whole team at Buck Another banger of a video from Nick Merckx, ladies and gentlemen.